Welcome to the Math Help Channel. Uh, today's video will cover how to graph an ellipse. Um, for those of you who watched my how to graph a circle video, uh, we're going to kind of go along the same path. Um, for those of you in analysis, no, we're not going to rotate the axis, so you have nothing to worry about. We're just going to practice these a little bit, um, go through some of the algebra that's that's, uh, um, that is required. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is just go ahead and jump right into it. A uh, couple things. Um, these are the two types of ellipses. Um, one along the major x, meaning the major is along the x-axis. Um, and this one is along the, ma the major is the y-axis, so meaning it is longer along the y-axis rather than the x-axis. Um, a squared will always be greater than b squared. So how to be able to tell the difference or be able to tell which um, equation is major x or major y, you look here. So whichever one, whichever number is larger, you look at what variable it is underneath. Um, also, an, another key thing with ellipses is it's got a, what's called a focus. It's got one on each side of the, um, of the uh, major axis. And it's inside the, the ellipse, and you, it's a squared minus b squared equals c squared, okay? So what happened, and then, uh, so c equals a uh, square root of a squared minus b squared. All right, so what do the foci look like? The foci look like this. So what you're doing is you're moving in towards the center. You're moving in towards the center, okay? So what that would mean is here, so for the foci, since you're moving in towards the, um, you're moving in towards the center, y is not going to change on the major x. So y does not change, and apparently I can't spell. And so that means that for the foci on the major uh, y, x doesn't change. Okay. Make sense? Okay. On, on a, um, as far as, uh, there are two different types of vertices in an ellipse. One is called the, one, one's called the vertices and one are called covertices. The vertices are the, are the endpoints on the major axis and the covertices are the endpoints along the minor axis. Okay. An ellipse has two different radii one along the major axis and one along the minor, from the center to the edge. Okay, the, the, uh, so that, um, so if you f uh, go from the center to each edge, that gives you its, I guess, it's, I don't know, kind of like a diameter, but not really. Um, but what we'll call that is the length of the major axis. So the length of major axis, and this works for both both types of ellipses. Major is 2a, and length of minor equals 2b. It works every time, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and go right into graphing a couple of these. And go ahead and start um, taking notes as uh, um, and pay attention to what I'm doing, because this will make it as simple as possible. All right, so we have x plus 3 squared over uh, 25 plus y minus 1 over 16 equals 1. Okay? What you need is to identif uh, identify the center. You need to identify wh wh whether it's major x or major y, major x or y. You now identify what A or B is, A and B is. Your vertex, I'm going to call that V, and your covertices, which is, I'm going to call that CV. Okay? Get all that? And once you have all this information, then we can go ahead and plot everything. And we'll get the foci in a minute. Center. Okay. So, A is... A squared, if you notice, is 25, and B squared is 16. 
So taking the square root of each of those will give you a and b. And remember, a is a is always a squared is always larger than b squared, so a will be five, and b will be four. Okay. So as you notice, a is larger than b, and 25 is greater than 16, and it's under x, which means x is our major axis, which means it'll open along the x-axis, meaning it'll be longer along the x-axis. So our center here is, remember it's always opposite of the inside, um, when it's inside, so it's negative 3 and positive 1. Negative 3, positive 1. Okay. Now, we're going to count our radii in each direction. So long, you always start with the major. So we go, we're going to count five in each direction. Uh, let me get a room here. So five to the right, one, two, three, four, five. And five here, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now we can go ahead and do the minor. In this case, it's four, so one, two, three, four. Wait a minute, that's lost what it was, here we go. Five. And then our one, two, three, four down here. You go ahead and connect your exterior dots. Right? It's not the prettiest, but the coordinates are correct, and that's what's important. Okay, what you should do, and what I didn't just to save time, is when you're graphing these, as you plot your vertices, write the coordinates down. It helps, so you don't have to go back and calculate it again. So your vertices are. All right, so it's 2, 1, and one, negative 8, 1. Notice your y did not change, because we're moving along x, not y. And then in the, for the covertices, you should have, it should be negative 3, negative 3, and negative 3, comma, let's see, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, that's about it. Um, and what, now we need one more thing, is our foci. First we need to find out what c is. Remember, to find c, you need a squared minus b squared equals c squared. So you get 16, or 25 minus 16. And so you get 25 minus 16. Square root of that equals c, so c equals root 9, which equals 3. What does this mean? Well, you're going to add and subtract 3 to the x coordinate of your foci, or you're moving along the x axis, I mean, along the major axis, whether that's x or y, you're going to move towards the center. Okay? So for this one, you're going to move, or you're going to subtract 3 from this coordinate, and here you're going to add 3. Okay? If it was a major axis, you would add 3 up here, or subtract 3 from here and add 3 from here. That's how you would find the foci. Okay, So that, that would make your foci here. So remember, all right, so we're changing our vertices. So, it's, so notice x is what's going to change. So 1 will stay, that 1 will stay the same, and this 1 will stay the same. So the 2, that's over here. Remember, we're going to move towards the center. So that means we need to move left. So we're going to subtract 3. So 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So our foci is, uh, foc that first focus is negative 1, 1. And the next one is, your, is this one out here, and you're going to add 3 to negative 8. And you get negative 5. And those are your foci. And you just plot those right on the inside, which is right here. And right one, two, three, four, five, right there. Okay? And you would label those. Um, uh, the same idea applies to the, when it's opening in, whoops, this should be squared, I'm sorry, um, for when it's opening in the y direction. I'll do that one real quick because I'm running out of time. All right, so if I wrote, uh, let's see, one here and four there, and this is minus one, minus one. Uh, minus 2, minus 1, 1. Okay. So we have this formula here. Now, same thing. We need to identify our centers, your major axis. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and write all of that out. So 
your center in this case is, we find it just like we did earlier, center is 2, 1. Your major axis, major axis is y because 4 is greater than 1 and, it's, and a is always larger than b. Therefore, and 4 is under y, which makes y the major axis, which means it's going to be opening along the y-axis. Uh, a equals 2 and b equals 1. Remember, that came from the square root of each of these numbers, vertices and covertices, and then our foci. So let's go ahead and plot that. We have everything we need to, to plot it. This is all you need to plot. This comes from after you plot. So let's go ahead and do that right quick. Okay, we're good. All right, so let's go ahead and plot everything. Two, one. So we're going to go up two and down two. So we have two, negative one, and two, three as our vertices. Remember, it's, the vertices are along the major axis always. And then we go left one and right one. So we have one, one as a covertex and three, one as a vertex. Now all that's left is to find our foci, and so it's a squared minus b squared equals c squared. So that's 4 minus 1, because remember, a squared is always larger. So c equals 3, okay, or root 3. So what you're going to do is you are going to move towards the center, and, I'll, and remember, it's along the major, major axis, and it's y. So we're going to start here. Remember, we move towards the axis, or the, the, I mean the center. So we subtract 3 from here. Should be. So the foci will be, for the first one, it will be 3 minus root 3, comma, I mean, no, I'm sorry, 2, comma, 3 minus root 3. Notice x will not change. And the other one is we're going to add root 3 because we're going towards the center. Should be 2, comma, negative 1 plus root 3. You can plot those. Um, but that covers the basics. The centers, I mean, if it, um, if these are zeros, that means the center's at the origin, and but all the steps should apply. Nothing should change. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment underneath. Um, please rate and comment, and thanks for watching.